Have you ever wondered why when you shoot using Magic Lantern and load your footage into DaVinci Resolve, the images are darker than what you saw on camera? In this video I'm going to explain how to always get well exposed images using Magic Lantern and some tools that the camera itself offers. My key lights is F4, but for my skin tone, I'm gonna set the aperture to 2.8, and uh, I'll explain why later in this video. So let's set the aperture to F2.8. Let's see the first color. At this point, my right side has to be between a yellow-white color, while the dark side will have a variation of color ranging from light gray to bluish. You see? Let's start the movie. A Sergio Russo's movie. Okay, this is how the raw image look after importing it as a Cinema DNG in DaVinci Resolve. I only made my conversion to Rec. 709 using DaVinci Intermediate as working space, and uh, I explained how you can unroll Cinema DNG files from Magic Lantern in DaVinci Resolve in a previous video, which link I put below in the description. All the Cinema DNG files used in this video were created with the same workflow. It's important to point this out because if you use any other workflow, the results may be different. This is how the image looks after my color grade. So let's go to the main topic, how to expose your images with Magic Lantern. When I take my shots to get my best exposure, I mainly use three tools, histogram, zebra, and false color. Using the histogram as guide with zebras is the easiest way. The idea is to expose to the right. It means pushing the distribution of your image data to the right of your histogram, getting as close to zero as possible without clipping the iris, and paying attention to the zebras. But not always using this method, you really get the best exposure for your shots. In this example, the histogram is telling me I'm overexposing. But the truth is that I'm getting the exact exposure that I want for my shot. The point is that with the histogram, the camera gives us an average of the overall exposure. In this case, the light coming from the lamp raises the average of the general brightness, giving me an overexposed reading. This is where false color comes into play, thanks to which you get a more detailed reading of the reflected light in different areas, giving you an idea of the contrast ratio and how to manipulate it. To enable false color, you can do it from the menu under the overlay tab in the Magic Lantern menu, or you can customize one of the buttons for a shortcut. I assign this function to the info button. If we look at the color chart offered by Magic Lantern, we have a total of 12 colors represented in an iris scale from 0 to 100. Pink color is equivalent to 0 iris or total black, while black color is equivalent to total white completely overexposed. I don't know if this is a bug, at least that's what happens to me. The colors just below the red, which is supposed to be dark red as in the Magic Lantern false color legend, is actually white. So this will be the correct legend, at least for me. Now let's focus our attention to the middle way of this color checker, to see how colors change in Magic Lantern, changing the exposure. So from the highest level to the lowest level, we have the following colors evolution, black, red, white, yellow, light gray, orange, 
medium gray, green, dark gray, cyan, blue, pink. A common role of thumb, valid for most cameras, is that green corresponds to gray 18%. That's not the case in Magic Lantern and I'll show you why. So, first I took a reading of the incident light of the color checker with my light meter. The light meter gives us the correct reading of gray 18%. The reading gave me f3.2. I double checked with my spot meter the reflective light of the gray to confirm the reading. Then I set my aperture to f3.2. As we can see, the 18% gray in our Magic Lantern false color corresponds to the light gray color and not to the green as it is in most cameras. How could this information be handy in the real life for the exposure of our footage? You can take it as a reference point. For example, it's useful when uh, we want to correctly expose our skin tone. In fact, unless you intentionally want to underexpose your subject for artistic decisions, the normal practice for exposing the skin tone and depending on skin color is to expose just about uh, one stop above middle gray for light skin tones or just to about middle gray for dark skin tones. For light skin tones, I normally stay in the yellow-white zone of my first color and it gives me more flexibility when I color grade the footage. Let's see some examples. In this shot, I exposed the skin for 18% gray. A medium gray color is predominant on the face. The image looks well, but I feel some lack of luminosity. After that, I exposed one stop above middle gray and as you can see now, we have more white and yellow on the face. This extra stop helps me a lot with my color gray. This image was shot at f2.8 for middle gray. I used my light meter for the exposure. The false color confirmed that the skin tone was in the middle gray zone with its light gray color. Then I open by one stop the aperture to f2, appearing the white color on the face. This way I got a more vivid and noiseless image. I checked the results using a EL zone system DCTL for DaVinci Resolve. As you can see, the image that I exposed to 2.8 for middle gray has a gray color in the skin that corresponds to the middle gray in the EL zone system, while the image where I open one stop my aperture has a light yellow color that corresponds to the skin tone range of the EL zone legend. Finally, looking at the waveform, the image on the right with white yellow color on the skin is in the right position between 50 60 Ari in the waveform. One stop more open it than middle gray. So, resuming, if you are going to export Cinema DNG files from the MLV app to DaVinci Resolve, your middle gray in the first color of Magic Lantern will be the light gray, and you can take it as reference to build your lights around it. For proper exposure of your skin tone, I suggest you to stay in the yellow-white zone. Finally, for people exporting in ProRes or Rec. 709 from the MLV app, for skin tones, I suggest staying in the light gray zone or entering only slightly in the yellow zone. That's it, and I hope this video can help you to get better exposure of your images. Let me know your questions in the comments, and I'll be happy to answer. Ciao!